Well, hey everybody, it's Steve, and today we're going to do a little presentation on introduction to limits and continuous functions. Uh, basically, it's kind of Calc 1 stuff. I had to reach deep um, trying to remember a lot of this stuff for, for limits, so it should be pretty interesting. Uh, oh, I got some feedback there. One sec. Turn that off there. That helps. Okay. Um, I don't know how many people will be watching this. Um, again, the math has been hit or miss. We've had anywhere from like you know twenty to forty sometimes. But I, I I like to think that people may be interested in some of this stuff. If not, it's it's cool. But for those no. who want to have some basic uh, introduction stuff, I think a, a lot of us are just trying to come in, give a basic overview of the topic, and then. You know, if people got more specific questions, they can dive a little bit deeper into it and get some of the more heavyweights, right? Because I'm not a mathematician. This is literally stuff that I am just remembering from my college days. And then I have a college book that I'm using along with other resources. This one um, I'm using here is actually going to be Calculus and Analytical Geometry by Sherman Stein, which actually is funny because I was the instructor for my roommate back when he was in college. He, that was actually his instructor, which is kind of coincidental. But anyways, I do have a midnight in here. so. Hello. Hello. Maybe between the two of us, we can uh, we can kind of knock this out. And if EO wants to come in, or I he's already in here. Oh, did EO pop in? I'm yeah, yeah, EO's, EO's in uh, here. Let's get, let's get him uh, shown here. Let me give you some people mods. EO. Going. E I E I O. Okay. <laughs> All right. Drake so is Drake is traveling across country, right? I so I don't think he'll be able to join us. Yeah, I know. He can watch later. Well, I wouldn't say cross the country. I think he's just getting out of the cross. path of the hurricane. Yeah. Well, let's just jump into it. Um, again, uh, I am doing a very preliminary overview. This can get very, very complicated very quickly. I'm doing some simple stuff, some examples, and giving you an idea of what actually we mean by a function, what we mean by continuous function. Um, and by the way, there is a slight difference between continuous functions and contiguous. I'm going to kind of explain the difference at some point, but uh, continuous just means a function uh, doesn't have any discontinuities, and a contiguous means that it's side by side. So if you have a function and there's no breaks in it on the line itself, that's called a contiguous portion of the function because there's no breaks in it whatsoever. But anyways, it's a little bit more than we need to get into. But let's, let's actually talk about limits and what we're doing. So let me screen share. And present. So if everybody in the outside chat, um, if you guys can let me know, if you guys can see this, that would be just swell. Um, I don't want to move that over. So let's see here. Let's scroll that down. Yeah. Uh, you you know you also you might yeah there we go. It, people can see you you, you right, present sweet. yourself. Okay. So what do we mean by a function? Uh, what do you mean? What do we mean by a limit? Uh, what our limit tries to do is kind of kind of tell us what's going to be happening at a particular point at a function, but the function may not even have something in that domain. In other words, we may not be able to stick in a number there where the function makes sense. Uh, most of the time, that's something like division by zero. A simple function such as like uh, 1 over x, where x equals 0 is undefined, right? As you guys remember, if you divide by 0, it's no bueno. The universe explodes. Cats start mating with dogs. <laughs> it's chaos everywhere, and it's not a good thing. <laughs> Ex except in, in higher maths, there are some ways of doing it, but whatever. But for the most part, a function is undefined when the the denominator is zero. So, what a function wants to do, what, I mean, what a limit wants to do, is tell us what's going to be happening at a particular point, even if that point doesn't exist or not. A very simple function, like the one I have here, which is two x squared plus one, which is what type of equation? Midnight. Wait, what? Which one over here? Two x squared. Squared plus one. What kind of? What kind of? Function? It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a it, Excuse me. It's a oh, parabola yeah. going up a little well, and then okay. going up. Like, no, hold on. Um, what do we call it, though? It's not a linear, right? Because it's not in the form. Yeah, no, of no, no. It's a quadratic. It's a quadratic. quadratic okay. So it's quadratic function. Um, so we know it's going to be a parabola, right? And what we, what we want to do is find out as that variable x approaches the value of 3, what happens? What do we get? What, what do we arrive at? So... I'm going to show you what this looks like graphed. And I love this little graphing program. It's just brilliant. So let's just pull this over here. Yeah. Okay. For some reason, I can't do limits still, unless you figured it out how to no, do it. No, it has limitations, but for what I need it for, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, again, it, it, it could be better, but eh. So what we're doing, we're, see, we're seeing this parabola, right? And we already, we already know a, a couple things about this parabola, right? 
we already know that it's offset by the origin by one because of the one there. We already know that it's a quadratic, meaning it's going to approach fr from this direction, from this quadrant to this one. And we want to figure out what we're doing at x uh, approaching um, 3. So as x approaches 3, which is, remember, 1, 2, 3 on the x-axis, we're going to go up here. We're going to go check this out. And we're going to say, OK, what happens at 3? Oh, there you go. So at 3, what does it say the y is? The y is 19. OK, 3 is 19. So as it approaches right from the left, which means it's from this side, from your left-hand side, as it approaches, you'll actually see the numbers on the x-axis go up and as well as the y. And the way I, way I show this here in this graph is if we plugged and chugged some numbers in there, let's say we put 3.1 in here, the outcome is going to be 20.22. And you can verify this if you want. And by the way, when you do this, very, very careful. When you remember the order of operations, when you stick a, a, something into this variable x, so let's say I, I have a three, well, yeah, three there. Let's say x is three. What do I do first? Do I do the two times x or do I do the three with the exponent first? Uh, you do the exponents first. Okay. So if I put in three there, what do I get? Nine times two is 18 plus one is 19. Okay, perfect. So you always do the exponent first. Make sure that you're aware, well aware of that. If not, it'll lead you to heartache and disappointment. And again, the universe explodes. So 3.1 we try, right, which is a little bit uh, lower than this value. It reduces this a little bit. 3.001 reduces a little bit more. You can kind of see that somewhere right here between 2.99 and 3.001, it's probably going to be about 19, right? You can kind of visually see that because as I'm approaching from the right, it's going from 17.82, 18.8, 18.9. It's probably going to be about 19. Well, hold on, Steve. Steve, uh, you, you know, you, you're, you're not showing the graph. I'm not showing the graph, right. Oh, okay. I thought... the, I'm just showing the chart. I'm just showing you visually on the chart. Uh, so on the chart, this? it's going to be... Uh, I don't know. Show him. Um, oh, right. So yeah, David. Good. Sorry about that. So, uh, show him. Here we go. All right, so this is kind of giving us an indication of what we can kind of expect to see. And then again, when we go to the graph, duh, 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 we can actually see that the, the limit is approaching uh, 19 when I get to 3. When I actually at 3, boom, it actually is 19. So we, well, the way you can solve this one, and this is one of the, the easiest ways to solve it, right? Limits are not easy past this point. I can tell you right now, they're not fun. EO is going to go, oh, Steve, they're really simple. No, they suck. Okay, let it well, suck. Let's, let's suck. Solve what it is. It's, they suck. <laughs> um, and especially, it's not so much the limit factor. It's it's rearranging the equation to where you could actually be able to get an actual limit. That takes a little bit of work, and we're going to actually get into that, and I'll show you. But in this particular e equation, it's very simple to figure out the limit. You literally just substitute x in for the variable. So, because I have no denominator here, I don't have to worry about it blowing up or being undefined. So... If I put in 3, as you said, 3 squared equals 9, right? Times 2 yeah, is 18, right, yeah. plus 1 is 19. I, I, okay. I, I didn't so, know you wanted me to answer. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> so this is this we know is a valid equation. We already, we already know that this actually works. Okay, so the limit as x approaches 3 for the function 2x squared plus 1 is equal to 19. We all agree? We're on the same page? Yes. Awesome. And Dave, you're on the same page? Eo? Yeah. yeah. Eo hasn't slapped me yet, so that's a good sign. Are you there, Eo? Well, no, I am, but we should we should point out that if a function is continuous, then its limit at that point will be the same as the function's value. In fact, that's the definition of continuity: is that the limit as x approaches a of a, f of x equals f of a. So, I am going to get to that. You're doing great. The only thing is, I would have chosen a whole to begin with, where the function's value is different than the limit. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into that point of the well, actually, see, uh, uh, you know, I, I yeah, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, you know, if 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 I if I have a suggestion for the next thing, you should probably you should you should probably you know tackle is actually explaining what a function is. Um, I, I could do that. I mean, well, I was gonna actually do that when we start doing uh, what's called injections, by ejections, and surjections, um, mapping of functions to a different things. Um, I thought by now we all know what a function is. Um, well, I, I, I mean, we I didn't do, get too like, much into that. I just yeah, I just I can't define it off the top of my head. I need to but. A function is basically something you put something in, you get something out. Yeah, and, uh, it's one, the, the function is always one to one. It's one to one so correspondence, you can't right? Have, yeah, you can have a function that 
you know that that has this. I think it has the same. It, it can't have the same X. We'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Um, I also want to get into what's called relations. You know what a relation is? If I have like X uh, squared plus Y squared, Y equal that 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 actually is called a relation because um, there's not a one core one not a one core one. Yeah. Core. Well, you know, I just we'll, figured, we'll get into that another time. Okay. I just figured that. It's uh, here. Yes. Okay. So this equation is going to be a little bit more complicated. Okay. If f of x is the function, which again, we're just putting this equation, we're just making this part of this. This is the function, that's all it means. And I want to put in some values to kind of determine what my limit is going to be for this, okay? So I'm going to pick something just above 1. What happens if I put 1 in this, in this equation as x equals 1? Uh, it'll be 0 on top and the bottom because... Yeah, what happens one, when 0 is on the bottom? It, 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 you can't deny it. It, you know, a couple things. Or you know, undefined, or you, or you, you get infinity. You know, I've seen, I've seen it, I've seen it called infinity. It's not. It, okay, let's clarify that. Um, one, the universe explodes. That's the main thing. We don't <laughs> want the universe to explode. It is undefined. <laughs> it is called complex infinity, but complex infinity has to do more with the north pole of a Riemann sphere, which I'm not going to get into. Uh, EO can do that presentation because I don't want to deal with it, but. Um, he knows what I'm talking about, but when you see something like you put in Wolfram Alpha, you get zero. It'll say come up with a complex infinity. For the most part, just just don't. If, unless you're going into, into more deeper maths, ignore it. Um, it's just don't don't divide by zero. Okay, it's undefined in the reals for for um, division because p over q as the division, the ratio of a, of integers as p over q. Is only valid when q is not equal to zero. Yeah, I know, but, uh, but I, I, I like to, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I like, I, 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 I like to go, I like to go back to an earlier, earlier, to your earlier lesson on the Taylor series. If you see a zero with an exclamation point, don't panic. You can, you, you can divide by that. That's it's fine. Simply so one. So, by so Steve, one. so Steve, here's a really good way to illustrate why we don't divide by zero. Because God if hates. I look, well, sure. Let's say I have a pie though, and there's six of us. I can divide it in six slices. I can divide it in two slices, etc. Right. Here's the problem with dividing anything by zero. Suppose there are 10 of us, and I, how many ways can we divide zero slices of pie? The question doesn't even make sense, right? Does everyone get yeah. that? So yeah. it's yeah. meaningless, and that's the problem. We can't- One divided by purple, you, who knows? I can't give you zero <laughs> slices of pie, or you know, that's, or if I have jelly beans, if there are 100 of us and we're splitting a bag of zero jelly beans, what does that mean even? Right. Um, Eric asked, no epsilon delta. Oh, we'll, I'll get into epsilon delta. Just, I didn't want to start off with that because we would be already. Wait, like, who's right Eric? Away. Who's Eric? Bring him in. Eric W. If, come in. if the person has even heard of epsilon del delta, Steve, you need to have him in here. It's open to everybody. The, the link to join is the Great Debate Community. Just go in there and get it. Come on in. And oh, let, let me, oh, let me give it. Steve. Okay. Just so it's clear, the very fact Steve is attempting this, um, Steve deserves kudos for. Uh, Contrary to what some people see on the internet, we're not part of Steve's fan club. I can write a book about what I don't like about Steve, but this is very brave. <laughs> you do not. <laughs> what does that mean? You love me. Um, are we sure about? Are we sure about that? Wow, yo, I'm hurt. What was up with that? My point uh, is, it's very brave to do what you're doing because epsilon delta is no joke. It's very rigorous, and as you saw with the proof last night, I, I was working night shift. Actually, it's funny. Um, it takes it takes a little bit of ingenuity to do it. So yes, yeah, it's not delta easy. Is not fun. In fact, that's one of the hardest things I have to do with limits, and I hated that. But I, I, when we get down to that, I wanted to be able to prove the first thing, and this wasn't part of the book. I wanted to be able to prove it, and I actually had enlist EO's help because I was like, okay, I'm stuck at this point, um, and then 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 we kind of worked it out. Oh, but well, anyway, that's good. so. Yeah, one thing you know, math is is something that's universal. It doesn't matter what you believe. Math is math, so this this applies everywhere. So, okay, back to the to the limits here. And by the way, thank you for that, Eo. Uh, and I know you do love me, but, oh, uh, but sorry, sorry. Great point. I just saw on Twitter they discovered a cuneiform tablet that showed the Babylonians knew about trig 1,500 years before the Greeks did. And this is an important point. Not to go. wow. Let me let me get just let me get on the soapbox for a second. Sure. Trig is trig. And it doesn't matter what your worldview is. It doesn't matter which church you worship at. Guess what? It's the same trigonometry. And I, I can't hit that point enough. And that's why some of us are you know, gravitate towards math because it doesn't matter what your worldview is. We're going to get the same answer. Sine of 90 degrees is 1. Cosine of 90 degrees is 0. Tangent of 90 degrees is undefined. Sorry, Steve. Go ahead. I'll get off my okay. soapbox. And, and by the way, like I said, this, this is one of the things I struggled with in Calc was limits, uh, the more advanced stuff. Um, it, it is not something easily to grasp. Um, 
I, no, I just, really. it's not. It, so, but anyways, let's just move on. So let's stick in a number here. So we're going to put in something close to one because again, <coughs> if we put one in, the, we have zero on the bottom. We cannot take the limit if the zero on the bottom. There are ways to do certain things called La, La, La Hospital's rules. We're not going to get into that. Um, again, that's beyond the scope of this. But what what we're going to do is we're going to stick in a, in a number here, and I'm going to show you. Okay, at at x equals point zero zero one, and we have, this is just the argument to this function. We're just we're just arbitrarily setting x to this value. Okay, not a big deal. But oh, when wait, I do the hold on. zero okay. one point zero one cubed, is that still one? No, this is this. I already Where? did the math for you guys. Midnight, if it helps, what he's doing is this function is not defined at one. But if you notice, it's defined for every value to the left of one and every value to the right of one. And so what Steve is doing is looking at values arbitrarily close to one. Do you get that midnight? Right. Yes, I got that. Close to one, but either to the either side of one, to the right. Well, of no, no, one. no, no. See, I see. I, yeah, I, 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 I got, I got that part. But you know, you know, one point zero one squared is equal to one point zero three zero three zero one. Okay. Oh, never That's mind. Important. Then you got so this. This right here even, is equal to this, which is equal to this. Which is approximately equal to this. Yeah, all right. I, I, I guess. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. Are we good? Yes. All right. So I've already done the math for you. So, and I also made a, a little chart. This is actually from the book. Um, so they actually did the math. But if I pick random numbers, like I said, to the left and to the right, look what happens. At one point one, I put into this again. Remember that you said about a function, right? One to one correspondence. For every value I put in, yes. I'm only allowed to get one specific number out, right? I can never get two values for a single input. Not, not good for a function. So unless you were dealing with vectors, but that's another story. Go ahead. <laughs> no, any for a function. Vectors are a little bit different. But uh, so I'm at one point one, right? I'm going to get this value at one point zero one. I get this value. You can kind of see that this value is going lower and lower towards one point five, maybe. And as it approaches from the the right hand side, right, these values start going up. And right about here, where one should be, right, I got point nine, point nine nine, and one point one, point one zero one. Right about here, where one is going to be. You can kind of guess it should be about 1.5. That seems about reasonable, does it not? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can can you guys see the pre my precursor? I mean, see my cursor here? Is that too small? On the no, it, it... It's pretty small, Steve. Uh, that's what she said. <laughs> All right. How about well, that? Does that make it larger? Can you see it? Yeah. Well, okay, the the cursor is pretty small. The cursor. Yeah, it, it's connect. It's a uh, selected this odd. Yeah, you're just gonna have to like bear with me. Um, I I I can't make the cursor much larger. Um, but I, for I, midnight, midnight, and David, are you guys watching? This is I mean, this is the important point. This function isn't defined at one, but we can get as arbitrarily close to it from the right hand side and the left hand side to one as possible, and that's what Steve is doing. You guys see that? That's true. That's, yes, that's critical. Arbitrarily close as we want. Right. Okay. Now, what happens? What happens if you set it equal to 0.5? Well, 0.5 doesn't matter. At zero, it gets undefined. 0.5 yeah. is going to be to the right. It's going to be way down here. So it's going to be some really low value. I'm not. You want to do the math? Put in 0.5 cubit minus one, and then over 0.5 squared minus one. I don't know what that comes out to be. Hey, Steve, hey, did you did did you graph this function? Uh, I do believe I have a graph. Yes, which I was going to get okay. into. Yeah, yeah you um, can show that. I was going to wait, but this this function looks like this. The okay. That's, uh, that's what I thought. So it looks like that. Um, but before I grab, before I show you on the graph, I, I want to wait on that. Okay. All right. Okay. So we, the way to solve this now, you you, you have to get this in a, in a form that you're not going to be dividing by zero. Oh, they said there's no cursor on the stream. Well, it it's just you're going to have to go bear with it. I, I I'm I'm going to try to get a uh, pad. Or something where maybe we can use um, but so I'm gonna go down so the way we do this is we basically remember with the binomial distribution yesterday or a couple days ago remember yes we okay if I remember so, correctly. right <laughs> these things all tie together and one thing you will tell you everything you learned prior somewhere gets on the line used again these things are integrated with each other okay there's yeah, really not much standalone in math yeah, I was okay. just I, I I was just gonna bring this up, like you know, what you're doing uh, x cubed minus one equals x squared plus one plus x plus one times x minus. You got it. <clears throat> right. 
So this this is basically just reworking, and I'm not going to go through it. If you want to remember how to do this, go look at the other presentation. But this is how you rework this right here. And basically, it's just it's just reworking it so I have another way of expressing it, and I group. I always group. This is how I learned it in in calculus. This is how I learned it in nuke school. You group, and the reason why you group is because you can easily see that these can cancel out. Yeah, that's okay. yeah. That's yeah, why you but, want to do it that way. What's yeah, that? but you know, you still you know, you're you're still left with the uh, you know with the with the new with the denominator. Right, right. You know, but, only but only this like, time if negative yeah. one if you put like a negative one you get you know what I mean? Like before right, before if you were to plug in one. Sorry, go ahead. Not, you, you not, know. Bear, bear with me. I, I'll get there. Bear with me. Okay. Sorry, I'm just excited. I don't know. Okay, that's good. No, excitement's good. We all get excited by math. Well, well, not so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At my well, age, if I get excited with anything, it's good. <laughs> so okay, so I know you can't see the pointer, but if you look at the um, in the outside chat, if you see x squared plus one plus x quantity and in the new quantity x minus one, you see that the x minus ones literally will, will be one over each other. So you can cross them out. So x minus one will cancel out on top with the x minus one on the bottom, leaving you with x squared plus x plus one over x plus one. So, right, so all I did was I did a binomial expansion. Again, if you if you decided to check it, you could just say x times x is x squared on the bottom. X times x is x squared plus one minus one equals zero. Then x time um, one times one is or one times negative one is negative one. So x squared minus one when you expand it is x plus one times x minus one. Right? Okay, go ahead. Eli. So if I may, so you make an excellent point, but as a pre-calc teacher, I have to point out you have to specify you put a comma x cannot equal one. After you do that, now you're allowed to make it anything you want after you've done the cancellation. But before the cancellation and during the cancellation, you have to reiterate that x cannot equal um, negative one. Positive right. one. Well, x, why cannot me and I? Why can't x equal one? Well, it's wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. First, 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 first of all, in which in which equation, in which uh, function, the original one or the new one? No, because in, in the, the one. In, in, where okay, see where it says x squared plus one, uh, quantity x minus one. And we simplified that to get the, the equation x squared plus x plus 1 equals x plus 1 over x plus 1. Yeah. And we canceled out the quantities x minus 1. That's providing that x isn't equal to 1, as he said, which I didn't include. Yeah, I know, but that's – that's, you know, that's, so why, that's why, that's, why is it – why so is it – is, Forgive is me, midnight. You need to stop focusing on x minus one because we're not we're not at that neighborhood of minus one. We can do we can look at that limit later, but right now we're only and this is an important point, Steve. We're only yeah. worried about the neighborhood around x equals one. Do you get that, midnight? We're only concerned about being close okay. to x, uh, close just... to x equals one. Right. Nothing else matters right now to us. Okay, so let's so so you can see how we reduce this, right, at midnight? Yes. X squared. Okay, so if we go down, we start taking the limit now. We couldn't take the limit in the form of, of x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus 1. Uh, feedback. Okay. It's not for me. We couldn't take the, we, we couldn't take the limit uh, of x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus 1 because if x approaches 1 and x equals 1, you have division by 0. Here in the new way of rewriting it, right, we basically all we did was rewrite the, the formula of the equation, um, and now if I put in one, what happens to the denominator? It becomes two. It becomes well, two. You just add it. Okay, right? Because it's not zero, correct? Yeah. Okay, because again, we, we p over q, q is not defined for zero. So if we do the math now, we stick in one for all the x's, we end up with one squared plus one plus one, which is going to be equal to three, one plus one on the bottom equals a two, and we get 1.5, 1, 1. which, if you go back here, which is about what we expected to get, right? Because if you look at the graph here, the graph, we're in the middle between 0.99 and 0 0.01. If you put 1 there, we would expect to be about 1.5 as it approaches from the left and to the, from the right. And also, here, I, I put this for, you know, clarification purposes. If we put in 0. 0.9, we get 1.5. We put in 1.01, .01, we get 1.50075. We would expect 1 to be in between those. And I, and I could have written that out as an equality, right? And how I would have written that as an equality? I would have just said 1.263 is less than point, uh, 1.5, which is less than 1.5075, correct? Midnight? Yep. Okay, so I didn't write it as an equality, but I think you can figure out the why I just I wanted to show you, look at it, we're in the kind of the neighborhood from the right or the left, and then we're kind of in the neighborhood from the right. As it converges on the function, it should get 1.5. And now I'll, I'll actually show you the... Uh, the graph. 
If you actually go here to... And Steve, if I can just take over for a second. On your yes, graph, yes, please. Please, please zoom in to x equals 1. Okay. So you're about to see, folks, the limit of technology. If a calculus student, you know, let's say even 50 years ago we're doing this, he would put a hole where that x equals 1. Yeah. And, and, and by um, the way, I'm adding it right now. But you have to, this program, they haven't fully it's – it's a newer type program. They haven't implemented this yet. They say if there's reasons, but I have to actually click it. And now I can put the hole that you're talking okay, about. Okay, great. So everyone's still country. with me. Limit, uh, sorry, limit. They just called it a midnight limit. David, can you see David it? David and midnight. Are you still with me? Yes. There is a hole. Basically, there. you're still you're still saying that you can't use that because it's still a limit. No matter how close you get to one, you still can't be one. Right. Not quite. So Steve showed. See where the hole is. The hole is at um, one comma one point five because the function is not defined there. Now this is the beauty of what Steve is doing. Steve is showing that we do have a discontinuity here. There's a hole. Discontinuities come in three major, major flavors. Uh, holes, um, vertical asymptotes, and, you know, kind of um, jumps. So the point, there's a hole here, but the fact that the limit exists, and Steve showed it what, what it was, we can fill in that hole and we can make this discontinuous function a new function, a continuous one, namely 1 plus x plus x squared over 1 minus x. Sorry, Steve, go ahead. And by the way, right. this is exactly yeah. what happens when we do the derivative. We're basically filling in it's a removable discontinuity, but that's a little bit farther than Steve probably wants to go today. But the whole point is there was a hole and Steve filled in the hole. Right. And that's exactly right. And so if you look here, if you look at where it says one um, undefined, the way I didn't put the newer version of the, um, the, the function in, but the old with the original, it has that hole there and it's at 1.5 on the Y axis, right? Now he's exactly right. The discontinuities would be, and this is why it's called a discontinuity. At this point, there is a, a break in that function. So you cannot you cannot go – think of it as a gap, right? The other way you can have discontinuity is what you said was an asymptote where you're approaching something, right? If I'm approaching an access, but I never reach it. You can't it. touch it, but you can never you touch can't it. can't touch it. Um, if you, once, you reach y, once you reach vertical, uh, you can't take the derivative of a vertical. It's a zero. Oh, it's, it's undefined. So you, you, at that point, it's, it's a discontinuity. And the other one he talked about um, – you said jump. So you're talking about like a Gaussian floor function? No, I just meant, for example, we could be mean and we could have the function defined way up at top, like y equals 10. But, I mean, when you say jumps, if you, do, if you do a floor function, you get jumps, which have discontinuities as well. Right, but no, but Steve, in this okay. context, so we could be mean, we could make this function, we could define it at x equals 1 to have the value y equals 10. And mm -hmm. you could see that we, we, we jump all the way from where it should be at 1.5 gotcha, all gotcha. the way to 10. Right. Um, just a point, derivatives you want to talk about, Steve, we have to have that there's, you know, smooth and no cusp. That's, again, we can do that next time if you want. We're a little bit far afield. Okay. All right. So let, let's continue on. So uh, just one more question. So sure, go ahead. Basically, so basically by redefining that function as an equivalent function, you've filled in that hole. I've eliminated that hole. Yes, and now I can that's beautiful. That that's exactly yes, true. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's the theory behind limits. When we can save functions and make them continuous, and again, Derivatives are just taking limits, and we can, they're called, when you have a derivative, you're hoping that it's a removable discontinuity at the origin is h goes to zero. That's brilliant, whoever that uh, guy with yeah. the mother and the baby. David. Exactly. And when we get it, when we, and we, we get in, when we get into the first principle, when we eventually, when I, I do a presentation on using um, a, a h going to zero, the define a derivative, and actually that way is a very good way to prove the power rule, which I'll get into eventually. Um, it's a little, it's not complicated per se, but it's very intense. I actually had to do this in calculus but way back when, and it, it takes a lot of, we had to actually do this in pen, right? So it takes a lot of scratch work. But uh, it's a very good way to, to prove the power rule. So I kind of wanted to, to go back to first principle at some time, right? We're not doing first principles in this hangout. A Bay's asking me in the live chat, no. Um, but at some point, yes, we're going to be we're going to be talking about that because I think it's important. Yeah, but I, you know, I'd, I'd ask you what first principle is, but you don't want to get into it, so we'll just wait till we actually get it, there. Yeah, it, it, it's, well, basically what we're talking about is the, the very first ways of getting derivative by h approaching zero, we have a function of x, uh, f of x plus h uh, plus f of x divided by um, h. No, f of x plus h minus Picture. f of x divided by h. The limit is h by plus e. zero. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I would say I have to remember it myself. I haven't used it in a while. Okay, so um, moving on. This particular function. Now, what do you think this kind of function would kind of look like? We have an absolute value of x. These are absolute bars, and that just means you always have a positive value. So it's x over the absolute value of x, where x is always going to be, um, when, you, when you evaluate this, you're always going to get a positive result, okay? So 
if I put zero in there, it's still undefined. Would you agree? Yes. Because it doesn't matter. It's still absolute value of zero is still zero, right? So universe explodes. Now, if I put a value in for like three, well, three over absolute value of three, which is three positive or three positive, I get one, right? If I put negative three, it's negative three over negative three, which is absolute value of negative three, which is? Positive three. Positive three. So negative three over three gives me a negative one. So I can kind of gauge that at f equals zero when I have an undefined value there. But if I put any positive number in, I get one. If I put any negative number in, I get negative one. So I can basically write it as an equality, and I can say, or inequality, and say if f of x is greater than zero, I'm going to end up with one. If I say yeah. it's less than zero, it's going to be negative one. Okay. And I say what's sure. happening? Yeah. Well, yep. Yeah, and I'm sure the graph while you're doing that, go for it. Uh, the limit is undefined. Well, hang on. Let's see here. Uh, actually, where did I? Here we go. So it's, this is what this is what it's going to be looking like. Okay, this is kind of a weird looking function, but it's not really. It's what it's actually doing. It's just saying as I'm approaching from the left, which is from the negative infinity, which is to the left side of the screen. As I'm coming towards the origin, right? I'm coming toward a limit, right? Which in this case is going to be uh, one. It's undefined, right? Because if I, it, it, is this the right thing? Yeah, did I get this so right? if I may, Steve, you might no, want to talk about right-handed, right left-handed limits. The, the right fact one. they don't agree here, that's probably the way you want to. That's not the right one. Yeah, no, it wasn't the right one. I was wondering. Yeah, yeah no, no, that's right. Uh, I was going to say, hang on, I got this. No, I, I'm going to left and right limits here in a second after this. But I need to, I need to get this right. So X divided by uh, ABS. I didn't. That's not even what it should look like. Uh, divide. It should be minus one until the origin, Steve, and a hole at the origin. It should be positive one from the right and a hole at the origin, and a hole at um, positive one, and a hole at minus one. Zero yeah. minus one. So there, the problem here is this is the kind of um, jump discount. Well, we can't save this function because there's no limit because the right hand and left hand limits don't agree. I, I like how you say that we can't save this function. It's not salvageable. So yeah, I will get in. I'll, I'll show it. Steve, that means. Steve, so, okay. you need to. There's some. There. Uh, they show you showing there was a subscript. I don't know. How, I don't know how to write this function here. X. Does you already have that I function have up there? That first second. Oh, I already have it. I knew I have it somewhere. Up there. You, had it. you showed it to us. There, there we, we go. go. Okay. There it is. Here we go. This is the function. Okay. This makes a little more sense here. Okay, because I, I'm actually approaching zero. I want the. Uh, this is where I should have the. The problem right there. Okay, so zero is undefined because obviously it's zero. We have the denominator, so that that makes a lot more sense. Okay, um, and up here we have as it approaches from as it approaches from the right, it's also undefined as well. Okay, so you you got that right. So any any uh, any positive value for x right, which is going to be to the right of the origin, is going to give me a positive one, which is this value of y right here. Any value that's to the left of the origin is going to give me a negative value of y which is going to be one, negative one, so down here. So A is this. We can say that we can take the limit as it approaches zero, right, for this function, if and only if A is not zero, okay? If A is not zero, right, then we can actually take the limit as X approaches some value, some arbitrary value. We're going to call that A, okay? Now, this is where it gets a little, little, little much, a little confusing, but... The value we want for A is some, some value that's not zero in this particular case that we can take a limit from the right-hand side or the left-hand side, and then we can compare them and see if, there one, if there's an existence of a limit for both sides, okay? So the definition of a limit is literally this formula here. As X approaches A, the limit of the function of F of X is equal to L. So as, a, oh, as x is approaching some arbitrary value, the limit of that function is defined to be L, which is the limit. So the, 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 the best way to, to think of this is very simple. Look at the limit of the function, which is going to be this f of x right here as it, appro as it goes to L, right, as x approaches A. So you basically have two things happening. You have x going to a value, which is the, the x on your Cartesian coordinate system, right? As that approaches some arbitrary value, the function, the original function you have is going to go to some limit. That's all it's kind of saying. 
So when you break this down from the right and left, the way we write this is this negative sign or plus, plus sign here. If I say the limit as x is approaching 0, minus is always from the right. The right, OK. So as x approaches 0 from, no, actually, to the left. That's from the left, yeah, from the yeah, negative. Right. Uh, negative to the left. Yeah. yeah, think about it, because you're coming from negative infinity, right? That's coming right. from the left-hand side of the Cartesian system. So, so uh, negative. So as you approach zero from the left, right, the, the left-hand limit, it's going to be equal to negative one, which you've already seen up here, right? We already determined that anything you put in here that's negative is going to be negative one, right? So as it approaches from the left, from the negative infinity towards the origin, it's going to be negative one. Now, as the other side, which is going to be approaching from the right, which is going to be the plus here, it's going to be 1, because any value you stick in for x from positive infinity towards the origin from the right is going to be equal to 1. We, we good on this so far, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so far so good. This, we, 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 this is not that bad right now. Now, if and only if, and you have to remember this because this is going to be critical, if and only if there is a limit that exists but for both the right-hand side limit for the x to the a plus and to the left, x to the a minus, and they are equal, then we can say that the limit of x towards a exists. Okay, so let's, let's repeat that. If you sure. find the limit from the right-hand side, if you find the limit from the left-hand side, if they both exist and they're equal, then the limit as to x to goes to a exists. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. And that doesn't always happen. That's the case here, isn't it? Well, you know what? Here, let me let me let me show you here. You got another screen out here. Well, I mean I kind of said that before, but I'll let Steve explain it. Why why that's the case. You got a wolf from Alfram here, because we love Wolf from Alfram. Um let me take the limits. Can you guys see this in Wolfram Alpha? Uh, a little zooming in would be. Okay. Well, yeah. I, well, I could try. Here we go. That better. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let me make sure. Let me try to get this in here right. So before I do anything else. So if I may, fellows. How do you really put that in there? Limit x. Why is limit this not coming out right? It's as right. x approaches, I I think you're gonna put yeah, limit well, x as x approaches. No, no, it's the inputs. The inputs right, but it's not well, the way I had it uh, earlier. Just it, it showed something different. I was trying. I'm trying to get it. Um, Steve, if I may. Oh, I did it. So, anyways, go ahead. Sorry. A really cool way to think about continuity is that small changes in x mean small changes in y. Can all of you see what happens in this function as we go? close to zero, all of a sudden we jump up positive one, and there's no way that we can salvage that and make this a continuous function. Without, and it can, continuity just means no breaks. That's a useful way of thinking of something. Okay, this is what graph, I put. There's no breaks in the graph. Yeah. Can get this that? Is, yep. Yes. And this, is, this, is, this is what I put to actually, this is, because I, I, I worked on this earlier. If you look closely, um, the limit from the, 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 the um, left, right, is negative one, and the limit from the right is one, but these are not equal to each other, right? Negative one is not equal to one, correct? Correct. True. So there's no limit at. I mean, so there's no um, limit at a there. At that point is zero. The, the limit does not exist, and we say the two-sided limit does not exist. This is what E was saying. This is non-salvageable. Yeah, you cannot I, I also, work this to get anything. Yeah, I, I also said that before, maybe prematurely, because I studied some of this stuff before. So you forgive me if. Uh, no, that's cool. You got it. You got it. So Eo. Um, so you want to expand that real quick? It's just that so, I, I want to make sure people realize that the, it was an if and only if. Just because I got a limit to the left and I got a limit to the right, they weren't equal. They have to be equal for that limit to exist today. So the limit of a function basically means what is the function's behavior near this point? And the, and the sad fact is, well, we can't even talk. We can talk about the function's behavior as we approach from the right here in this example, as we approach from the left. But there is no behavior as the function approaches because it depends on which direction you're coming from the left to the right. And in this case, there is no limit because you guys can see that just intuitively. Like, what should the limit should be? Should it be minus one or should it be positive one? We can't decide, right? 
they're you know and so right. i, I want to make the point does anyone notice that when we're dealing with the the real line there are only two directions to approach a number right can all of you see that from the left to the right everyone with me yep. yeah. mm -hmm. imagine now in vector calculus imagine if now we're talking about three dimensions how many different ways would there be to approach a point does everyone see there be infinitely many ways uh yeah. hold on a second if it's, hold on if it's three dimensions wouldn't there be only three ways no, no, because you have, you have <laughs> multiple, you have multiple things, you have multiple vectors in those three dimensional space pointing to one point. Because all I have to do to change direction is move point. Well, okay, uh, yeah, right, right. Uh, point so something in, in another in another coordinate system. Don't worry. Well, the point I'm, I'm point I'm trying to make you appreciate it's not quite as hard as I'm making out to, but you can appreciate how simple it is to just have two directions. Does everyone understand that? As opposed yeah. to infinitely many. Right. Yeah, infinity throws you for a loop. And, and and as EO, assume not EO, assume as uh, you know, eulogy points out in the live chat, in order to be differentiate, in order to be differentiable, you have to have a continuous function. If you were to try to do do, do a derivative of a non-continuous function, you 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 get undefined. You can't. If I put zero in here, right, um, I'm going to be have undefined in the denominator. You can't take a derivative of that. So, so if I may, Steve, I finally get to get eulogy back. Continuity is sufficient. I mean, it is a necessary condition, but not sufficient. You need much more eulogy. You need something in layman's terms. You need a smooth curve. So, in other words, they can't be sharp corners. They can't be cusps. So, again, continuity is a necessary condition, but not a sufficient one for differentiability. So, yeah. So, so let me put that in layman speak. It could be continuous, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you still can differentiate it. Right. For our all Ferraris are cars, but not all cars are Ferraris. Ferraris right. are the different Ferraris. I mean, Ferrari, differentiable functions of the Ferraris of cars. There you go. Uh, and if we want to get into like smooth functions and all that other stuff later on, that that's going to be the beyond the scope that I would ever get into. But I, I understand the concepts. But if you want to do one on manifolds, that'd be great too. On three dimensional manifolds and, and slow and smooth three dimensional functions, like for planes and undulating and all that cool topological shit. That'd be great, but uh, you and out. you and Han should get together and do Einstein's field equation. I'm telling you, Steve. I've tried to. I I literally have asked him like for months now. So okay, but let's move on. Let's stay with back to function. So um, midnight. So what are the two conditions in order to make, in order to have to be to make sure that you can say that there's a function at a as x approaches a? What what are the two conditions? Uh, they the they they both have to eat. The limit has to equal has to be equal on both sides. The limit has to be the limit has to exist on both sides and has to be equal. Correct. Okay. So here's some just diff, additional rules of limits. Okay. I didn't include all of them. These are not um non. This is non exhaustive. This is or this, this is an exhaust. Not yeah, a non exhaustive list. So don't think there's not a lot more rules. There are, but some of the more basic ones. Um, one of the more the more common ones which you'll be using is the limit of a constant equals a constant as x approaches a. You also can see this as c. Lim c equals c. Um, this right here, and I think I, yeah, let me give you an example. It's very common, so let me blow this up so you guys can see this. Okay, so if I take the limit from x to 2, if x equals 2, right? Oh, wait, that's not the right one. Wrong one. Uh, well, you know what? I can change it. That's okay. I, I got so many different things. Over. So let's take a constant. So let's pick a constant. Okay, uh, any constant. Come on, why do you got to compute so much? Eh, this is not what I wanted. Uh, oh, I see. I put it in the wrong place. We'll just put the limit 3, 4x, uh, x2, 3. That's how you write it on here? You know what? I don't use Wolfram that often. You, know, you use Wolfram more often. There we go. That's how you write it. Okay. So in this particular case, I'm taking the limit of a constant. 3 is a constant, right? It doesn't really matter what I'm putting here. If I put x goes to whatever, that there's nothing in there that changes, right? So the limit of a constant is always the constant. Would you agree? Because I can put anything. If x goes to 0, who cares? It's still 3, right? Yep. Okay, so the limit of a constant is always a constant. Um, another good rule to know is that if you have the limit of a constant as a product times the function, right? k times the function, you can actually just bring the k out. Okay, so I'm left with k times the product of the limit of the function, which is a very handy thing to know when you start using these things to manipulate things, right? So I, if I have uh, the limit of the function, right, and I have a k as a multiplier of it, because that's all I'm doing, I'm just multiplying the, the function, I can actually take that k out 
of that part of the equation. And then you could use it to, to do some cancellations and, and manipulations. Okay. So kind of makes make sense. Just inside baseball for your benefit, you can see why. Just epsilon over K. So if epsilon works, then epsilon over K will work. That's just for you, Steve. Okay. The next one, the limit of, of X is approaches X. This one is also used quite frequently. This is actually just saying, and you you know what? There's cheat sheets for this. Don't expect to memorize these until you've actually done a lot of calc. But there are cheat sheets for this. But at some point, you do you are forced to memorize these. But the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's the that's a fun one. So X is not that complicated, really, and I'll explain that one next. But the limit as of X um, equals A as X approaches A, A is always going to be the, the limit there. So if I have like lim X equals, um, just say, okay, let's say, let's, say, let's say I have lim X equals. If X is approaching five, what is the limit? Five. Five, because you take five, you put it in. Uh, for a, you get f x approaches five equals five. So that's all you're doing. So basically, as x approaches a, the limit of x is going to be equal to a, which is going to be the same as l. Okay. Now this one looks a lot more complicated, and it's really not. This is where it's kind of deceiving because it's really simple. Okay, but it looks complicated. The g of x right here is just another function, right? I'm already be using f of x for functions, right? And that function, this is if I say f of x equals x squared, all I'm doing is a, I'm making a, something where I can stick in ve different values for x and get something out with a one-to-one -one correspondence. So I'm just creating another function. And instead of calling it fx2 or fx something else and get confused, we just decided to call it g of x. We can also call it h of x and other things you'll see. But these are just two different functions. Now, if I want to take the function as x, uh, the limit as x going to a for these functions, and I have it in this form, it is exactly the same as taking the limit of one function, taking the limit to the other function, and adding them together. That's all it's saying. So it's basically the limit of the sum is the sum of its limits. That's a fancy way of saying that. Okay, um, you're gonna you find it used very often when you get into using uh, calc with more than one one more than one function like this. The other one's very very similar. This is the one the limit of a product is the product of the limits. Midnight, if I take if I have if I want to take the limit of x approaching a for the product, which means multiplication times, of the function f of x times g of x, do you see how I can just separate it out and say, okay, that's got to be equal to the limit of the function f of x times the limit yeah. of g of x, right? Same thing yep. as the, 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 the sum of the sums. It's just instead of having a, an addition sign there, I'm actually having a multiplication, multiple, multiplicative uh, operation or multiplication <laughs> sign. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. Multiplicative. <laughs> multiplicative. Yeah. Well, I mean, Steve, Steve, Steve. You know, just to just to say, you know, if if if, uh, if as if x goes to a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if if f of x is a equals x, so that's five, and g of x let's say equals x squared. Uh, okay. Yeah, and, and they have the same limit. It would be 125. Well, think about yeah. Well, I, I, I'm not gonna do it in my head, but I do keep it simple. Look at just plug in something like like uh, x, just x itself, right? Don't even have to worry about taking it squared or anything. F of f of x is just x, right? So if I have the five, if x equals five, right? Yes. Okay. So in this particular particular case, the limit of five is five. And the limit of the g of x is 5. So the product is 5 times 5 is 25. So I can say the limit of 25 as x approaches a is the same as the limit of a constant, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but Steve, the yeah, back here, aren't, you know, is, isn't, is, isn't there a rule of two functions being the same? No. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, if, if, if never mind, go ahead. Okay, so look, if I just put 5 into x here, 5 times 5, five times five because I end up with, with the f of x equals 5, g of x equals 5, right? So 5 times 5 is 25. The limit of 25 is 25. Here I'm going to do the same thing. The limit of 5 is 5 times the limit of 5 is 5, 25. Either way, all this is going to equal to 25. That's, you want to make sure that, that you, you, you get the same result, right? So, Steve, both, let me of, both of these things are basically just a restatement of the commutative and distributive properties of addition and multiplication. Because they hold quite, true. Because they hold quite. true. So hold on. Because they do hold true. Yeah, let me, hold on, let me shed some light. What Steve is doing is building a powerful toolkit, and this is important. When Steve and I were discussing this last night a little bit. 
mathematicians, contrary to popular opinion, don't like getting our hands dirty. So we make all these fancy rules. And so what Steve is doing is building this huge toolkit so he can approach every function possible that's continue well whether it's continuous whether the limiting is so again steve is building up this wonderful toolkit and hopefully he'll get to the point where the the limit of the composition is the composition of the limit with continuous functions but go ahead steve yeah um I, i'm not getting into compositional functions at this at this particular hangout um at some point we probably have to do composite functions um not one of my favorite things to do but i can do composite functions but the, the key thing with this, and as EO points out, is that once you have the toolkit here, you don't actually have to kind of go through the steps. If I see an equation that has the limit of x approaching a, and I have two functions that I'm taking the limit of the product, I can just go ahead and do it. I can just apply the rule. You don't you don't have to show the the minutia at that point if the if you if you get the if you get the rules right. Okay, so it is a toolkit and it is a time saving factor. Like just like the power rule, right? When you have the power rule and you're using a derivative. You don't have to derive the power rule every time to use it, right? Because I, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, it's a pain to der derive it. We're going to be doing that eventually. You don't want to go through those steps. So these are these are things that in your toolkits that you can use to help you help your life when you're doing limits. So the next one would obviously we have to worry about what happens when we have a quotient. Okay. So in this particular uh, quotient, the limit as x approaches n. For the ratio or the quotient of the function f of x over at g of x is the same as saying if I took the limit of the denominator here of f of x over the denominator, the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Now, because I'm dealing with the denominator here, I have to add the caveat that g of x cannot equal zero. Right? Because if g of x equals zero, what's the, the limit of zero? The universe explodes because the limit of zero is zero. So this has to be included in this quotient rule for limits. It's required. Yeah. Okay, but the the way this comes in handy is because if I have an equation in this form, I could set it up and just say, okay, I want to take the limit on the top. I want to take the limit across the bottom and see what I get. Um, and there are other ways of manipulating too. For example, you can you can always rewrite a quotient in the form of an inverse. Right in the inverse way, which is writing it as a product, right? Remember, because remember, division is the reciprocal function of, of multiplication, and multiplication is the reciprocal function of division. So there are ways of rewriting these things that way as well. Now, so we're gonna, you okay, should point out you you used this rule already in one of your proofs earlier. The earlier example, x cubed. I did, but I, I indirectly, but yeah, I did. Yes, uh, you're exactly right. Go ahead. While well, you doing that, I'll show you where I used it. Yeah, and so the point is, right he's already tacitly used that that rule and it's, you can already see midnight where it came up right yep because right here i took the limit across the top i took the limit across the bottom right that's ex that's exactly the same way as just taking the limit of this whole function so in this particular what this one square plus one plus one over one plus one that's exactly when you would use this exactly but i i tacitly used it right i didn't have to like invoke it and show it and all this other thing i just used it but you're exactly right so let's continue on now we're going to try some problems yeah, because people ask me, hey, Steve, why don't you include some practice problems? Well, here's the part of the well, video. I'm the one who said that. Yeah, it was you. Okay. So I took your, your, your I, I do take things on board. If you guys ever watch this video afterwards, or somebody who watches this video afterwards, if you don't want the answers, do the problem, stop the video, and go from there, right? But let's, let's actually try to do some sample problems. So, first sample problem. Get your paper, you guys get your I pen wonder, and paper out? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Practice problems. Let's do number one. Hang on. <sighs> good selection, Steve. Number three, the algebra will be involved for some of the people in the chat. Okay. I, I, I took a good random okay. sampling. These are practice problems out of the book. I took a random sampling of the so, ones that I knew how to do pretty easily. Um, I wanted to keep it pretty simple. So, well, but I thought I these mean, Steve, Steve, actually, actually, you know what, you know what, to, you know, to, to, you know, to keep it, to keep it so people, you know, I, I, <clears throat> I'll write, you know, I'll write the answer I get in the side chat. Uh, I suppose I could, I don't know. They, how would you? Me no, like, no, sorry, yeah, let me open up thing? the side chat. Midnight, do you have okay. only one lung? No. Why? You always sound so out of breath. Well, uh, I'm one. I'm overweight, and I and I, I seem to have nerve damage. So I don't know. Are oh, you, I'm do, sorry, buddy. I'm do, sorry. You, do you vape? That back. No, I don't vape. Uh, you know what? When I quit smoking, I didn't even vape. I've never tried vaping. So 
So I'm kind of glad I didn't because I, I know a lot of people kind of like it, but I don't want to okay. get. I got to get give smoke, so I don't want to go like vape. You know. Okay, so if I just plug it in, then it'd be... all right. So, uh, one question, real quick. I'm wondering, do you guys? I'm not sure if it's even being covered in this one, but did you cover um, uh, what is it? Uh, limits when it is it's applied to um functions with removable removable discontinuities. That was the second example. That, that, when the second one that we did, we rearranged the formula where we could get rid of the discontinuity to rewrite it in a way, which is to to to, to rewrite it in a way where you don't have that discontinuity anymore. We we have removed that discontinuity in that way. That's exactly what I did in the second problem. And it, and in fact, spoiler alert: two and three have removable discontinuities of x equals two and x equals one, respectively. Spoiler alert. All right, so let's not jump ahead too much. This is the first problem. This is exactly like the first problem we did. Okay, it's pretty pretty straightforward because again, we're not worried about a denominator. We're not worried about it blowing up. So we're asking what happens with with the limit um, as x approaches five. So what I can what what can I do to, to solve this problem? Well, if you want me to just tell you, you could Go just plug you could just plug the five in. Okay. Just like that, then you get. Um, let me scroll. Let me scroll down here to yeah, the you answers. Get, okay. You get Twelve. So. So I, I want to set it up of f of x approaching five, um, uh, uh, x plus seven is, is equal to l, right? Because it's going to be in that that I'm doing it a little more proper. This is the the the, you know, the official way of doing it. So I just took it in there and I get twelve, right? Because five plus seven equals twelve, right? The limit approaches as five approaches. You know this actually should be underneath here, but whatever. Um, but it's, it, these are not multiplied. This is x approaching five. Um, is equal to 12. You're exactly right. Okay, so let's go to the next one. And hold on, Steve. If I may, I'll just say that all those rules you laid out, um, number one uses two of the rules, namely that the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits, and the limit of a constant function is the constant itself, and the limit of, as x approaches 5 of x is 5. So yeah, there are three or four things going on, but as you pointed out, it's very simple to see the limit is 12. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, 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 some of these, some of these you, you, you kind of intuitively use the rules, right? So now the next one's right. a little bit more difficult. Right. Can I can I actually do this one? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. We'll start off with this. What what a value in here um, are we trying to avoid? We're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid a equals two. A equals two. Right. Because at that point yes. the universe explodes and we all die. Not Steve, a good thing. Any anyway, moving on. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. If you you know if you if you if you if you just plug a you know you're left with a squared minus four over a minus two. However, if you want to avoid that, you know a x squared minus 4 is x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x. Great okay. job, Ed. Sorry, I was applauding you. Sorry. Oh, I was, appla I was applauding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? But, yeah, but, you know, but, you know the, the x minus 2 cancel out, and you left with a, but a plus 2. Similar similar right, so, thing for number 3. All right, so let's, let's look what you did there. So we're going to go the... The way I already did all the answers. So I want to I want to take you know what I'm gonna put this under here so you can't read ahead here. Okay, so I'm taking I'm I, what I exactly right. What I did was you or you did you take the binomial expansion right. So I'm I'm expanding this out which we learned the other day, right? We know that x squared minus four is going to be equal to. I'm sorry, Steve. It's not a binomial. It's it's a difference. It, it's, of it's, it's a difference, difference of, of squares. You're right. Okay, it's difference. Okay, you're correct. It's a difference of squares. You guys remember back in the day you had to learn to do what's called completing the square. That kind of stuff, yeah. So, all right. So you're taking you're, you're you're basically you're taking this and you're factoring it out. You're creating two quantities, um, and then what we can do is we just take x minus two, cancel that out with the x minus two in the bottom, and what are we left with? X plus two, right? Plus well, this is simple at this point. We just stick in two, right? And you get four. Yep. All right, and we know that when we know by the by the rules, oh, this is supposed to be a capital L, but whatever. Um, I'm currently doing number three. Okay. Hold on, fellas. It's, this is beautiful. Again, there should have been a comma. X cannot equal two. Sorry, bud. Yeah. Okay, so um, at this point, we just have a limit of four, the constant, and then it's limit of four. So the answer to this right here is four. Okay? Yep. We got it. Okay. Number two. Excuse me. Moving on to three. Three. Uh, yeah, I'm doing three right now. All right. Three is as X approaches one x to the fourth minus one over x cubed minus one. Now this one again, you have to do factoring. You have to 
You want to be it's able a little, to. Yeah, it's, it's a little involved with this one. It's a little involved. You want to be able to eliminate something on the bottom so you don't have that potential for division by zero. Okay, so we'll, we'll step through it as you're doing it. So three is coming up here. Here we go, three. So if you don't want to look, don't look. But the rest people, this is how it's factored out. And again, if you, if you want to double check it with, with Wolfram, go ahead. But this is basically, again, I'm, I'm getting quantities that I could put together that are equal to x to the fourth minus one where I can start doing cancellations. Oh, see, this is beautiful. I can see us doing partial fractions in integration using these same techniques of factoring. Um, like I said, if your audience is interested in this stuff, we it could, you know, we could go forever with these lectures. Well, I mean, it's math. I mean, you could spend forever. I mean, it's just one. It's one. One thing leads to another, right? And again, all these concepts are integrated with each other. There's no. There's not much standalone stuff in math. Um, See, but let me let me elaborate on your point. I was told, and I believe it after teaching calculus. The main reason students struggle in calculus is not because of limits necessarily, but it's because they don't have the trig down and the algebra down. And if you have the trig and algebra down, you, you typically find that students excel at calculus. So you're exactly right. You have to integrate everything and synthesize everything you've learned up to this point. I had algebra obviously going into the Navy, but I got to tell you, um, it wasn't until military school where you learn math in ways you've never learned. I mean, it was just, it just, you, you know, you, you actually learned a lot better, I think, of how to manipulate these things and how to rearrange them because I would I get into it I would have not have been able to do this in junior high even though I took algebra we were taking pre-algebra in, in junior high there's no way I just, I just I didn't know how to do it very well so I sucked at it but anyways so we have these quantities out and you can you can look away um, so okay so what we do is we're going to be canceling out we're going to be canceling out the quantity x plus or excuse me x minus one by the quantity x minus one on the bottom and again I wish I could have a way to show you that these is I just line them out. Just you take them and you cross them right out, um, and I'm left with the quantity x squared plus one times the quantity x plus one divided by um, x squared plus x plus one. Now again, if you if, if you need to work on the algebra to, to manipulate these, we can do another hangout for that. Um, I'm I'm going through this pretty quickly. Um, I'm not showing you the algebra because that's going to be a lot more in, involved than, than I kind of wanted to get to. But you can you can you can tell what we're trying to do here, right, people? Yes. Okay. And you know, and you know, and, and now, now that you have x squared plus one over x squared plus x plus one, it, you know, it will be easier to find the limit. Right. Because I can just stick in one. Negative. Yeah. I can just, okay. So I stick in one. Boom. I get, I get one squared plus one plus one plus times times one plus one. I end um, up with four on the top four. and three on the bottom. And the limit of a um, constant is the constant. So my limit as x approaches one is three over four is equal to three over four. Boom. There you go. You meant to say four over three. Steve, do you want to scroll over for three. a second and go to the original function? I want to show them. And something. and by the way, well, well quick if I may, um, I know an AO, you may you may disagree with me on this, but this is how we learned it. Um, when you're in when you're in grade school, they always say never leave an improper fraction with the numerator higher. Later on, they don't give a fuck. Okay? Just seriously, straight up people. It doesn't <laughs> no, matter. Like it doesn't matter. This is perfectly it, fine. It, it, no, it, had you written eight over six, I'd have an objection. But four over three is just fine. It's can, reduced. Can you, can you can you scroll up for a second? I want to show. Yeah, the, um, yeah you always want to reduce it, but just because the, the numerator higher. Okay, I got good. the answer from a four, which I mean. Hang I on, midnight. Fun. Hang on, buddy. I want to show you guys something cool. Look at that. First. Okay. See the x to the fourth minus one and the x cubed minus one. Yeah. See the exponents, everybody. Um, you notice you notice something here. See Andreas, you guys see that you see the first one's four and the second one's three. Steve made right. reference to L'Hopital earlier and you'll learn later on you could simply just take the derivative 4x cubed over 3x squared and then you know cancel out the x's and then that 4 over 3 where does that come from it comes from the exponents there i won't make it a hard and fast rule i just think it's a really key and also there's also ways of figuring out okay this is good way i didn't want to get into this but i knew he was going to be here well, so too bad, Steve. figured but there are there, there are also ways of figuring out limits by by if you know the coefficients of the highest derivative of the polynomial yep yep and the okay. powers yeah and the powers. Okay, yeah. so, so, but that's beyond the scope of this particular introduction. Um, so, you know, you know, you know, you, you, oh, you know, EO and I really have to have a chat one day. I want to pick your brain. You know, it's funny. Like I said I know what EO's talking about, but but it's just like you know, I don't, I don't even want to bother with that stuff. So, but yeah, he's exactly. But there are ways. I told you, there's many different ways of, of finding out limits. This is just an introductory. But yeah, eventually you ha you learn ways of, of taking the you find the highest um, power, the high or the highest order. Um, and then you can use that to find the coefficients and blah blah blah, and, and it's it sucks. But anyways, let's go on the next one. Uh, 
The next problem here is okay, number, number four. four. So as x approaches three, it's, one over x plus two. Yeah, you, you you just plug in the three, you get one one over five. Just that what that limit is uh is easy. You just plug in the three. Good. All right. And you know, an so, x, my, yeah, my x cannot x cannot equal negative two, obviously. Okay. Correct, because then I have zero. So, you, you, exactly, you just plug in three here because Hold I'm on. not. I can't blow it up. No, midnight, you're right. But we. So how do I put this? This is actually kind of an important point. Midnight, you're right to be worried, but you're being a little bit um, <sighs> fastidious. You don't need it. I won't you get you offended. Don't, you don't have to worry because we're nowhere near minus two. Do you understand? Buddy? Right. We're not. We're, we don't care about minus yeah, two. Yeah. I know. I just. I just. Right. I don't know. I just. I just. Feel like editing it, you know. And, and, you I know, you, and, and you, 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 you always tell Steve that you know, comma x not equal. Not quite well, the same. It, so it's, it's not, like the singularity yeah. of a black. It's like the event horizon of a black hole. We're nowhere near the event horizon, so we don't need to worry about it. Does that yeah. Make okay. Sense? So I, I understand what you're saying, and I, but but you conceptually, you're a little bit off because again, we don't care what's happening at x negative two. This has. We care about what x happens at x equals three. Right. That's what we're taking. Yeah. The limit yeah. Of. Okay. Right. Okay. So you're right, but it, you just plug in three, you get one limited one over five, which is a constant, which is one over five. Okay. Perfect. Now let's go to the next one. Oops, I just showed. So the limit. This one's easy. I mean, how simple is this one? Limit is twenty-five. The limit is twenty-five. Boom. Yeah. Done. That's it. Okay. That's all you gotta do. Okay. Number six. I, that, why? Why, six. why? Why is this true though? Why is it the limit of twenty-five as x approaches three? Why is it twenty-five? Because it's always twenty-five. It's twenty-five. Because it's a constant. The limit of a constant is a constant. <laughs> Right, that's it. Boom. Okay, so the next one. Can you number... go down a little bit for number six. Number... Okay, so six. we're gonna we're gonna be taking this one apart. This one again, we're approaching from the from the the right hand side, right? Because it's x approaches one plus. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. But let me. See, I think I actually mapped this one. So let me, see, let me... can I just may I just say the reason why this is a difficult problem is that the absolute value function is something called a piecewise function. It's in pieces, and since it's in pieces, we're going to have right and left hand limits. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I always had a problem with piecewise functions. Still do. This is a this is a little more difficult one. This is not an easy one. I didn't graph this one, but that's okay. Well, this is the it's same. A it's the same one as the as the. One without the minus ones. Well, let, let's let's check out what's going on here. So let's do it for the first step, okay? So we we, we we say that the as the limit of x approaches one from the right, right? Because we're finding the right hand limit, right? Is we we can actually start plugging in numbers here, and, and this is the only the only way to really kind of to think about this is as I'm pro as I'm approaching from that that right hand side, we can kind of see if we plugged in the numbers, it's approaching. The number one on the on the y axis. Okay, so if you put in six, it's it's approaching one. If you put in four, it's, it's approaching one. Anything you pro, you're putting in there, it's starting to approach the number one. Okay, and actually, I'm a, I did graph this one. So let me kind of show you. This, this is one of those ones you kind of have to like graph out. And by the way, gra there are graphical ways of doing these things as well. But graphically, you, these this isn't the right one. Um, uh, number three, uh, third line. There you go. Okay, so thank you, because I knew I had it in here somewhere. So as as I'm approaching from the right-hand side, right, it is approaching this value here. And what happens at 1? It's undefined. It's undefined, because 1 minus 1 is 0. Absolute value is 0. So we, we can kind of see as any number for x I put in here, boom, doesn't matter. One, I get 1, right? Any, any yeah. 1. Okay, so because what happens is any number I put in, oops, oops, did I not solve that one? No, but I didn't. I, okay, I, I just, well, that's the answer. But the 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 only way to really do it is again visually, um, because as I'm approaching this way, any value that I put in there, if I put you know six, I'm over, I'm, I'm literally six over six is one, right? Ten over ten is is one. So any value I put in there, so in this one, you just kind of have to graphic graphically do it, um, and 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 say, look at as I'm approaching x from the from the right hand side. If you look at the graph, it equals one. That's how you kind of have to solve this one, unless Eo knows a different way. Yeah, there is a different way. You just use the fact that the absolute value of x minus one equals x minus one for x greater than okay. or equal to one, or equals one minus x for x less than or equal to one. But it's it's just a simple algebraic manipulation. But you, you conveyed the point adequately, so you can move on. Okay, the next one. Um, this one's next a bonus. I actually wanted to include this bonus one. This one is a little bit more challenging. Okay. Um, mm, I'm doing it now. Let me see. Did I graph this one too? I did graph this one. Okay. 
that's this graph. That's the that's the graph here. And by the way, um, if you notice here, th this this particular program doesn't have a way to, um, to 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 put a square root in. I don't think. Uh, at least I couldn't figure it out. So you see how I put a square root in there? No, hold on, hold on. You, you know, you can you. Oh, actually, on. look at look at my x. Do you notice something with the x? Yes, I noticed that. Okay, but, so yeah, but, the but exponent. If, if, you write, if you write the word, yeah, if you write the word S Q R T, that, that you know, that's actually one way of doing a square root. Right, but I don't think it worked in this demos program. It works in in math. No, it does. It does. I've tried it, it before. Okay, and whatever. It's still good practice. Um, you, yep. you shouldn't get so used to to like we we working uh so we just we we, we we working with with the symbols or with uh, a a function like square root is a function, right? It's called the square root function. Um, you should actually know all the different ways of writing stuff. So if I write x to the one half, that is exactly the same way as writing square root of x. That's true, and you know, and and, and that and that and that works for for any nf power, any nf uh, nf roots. Sorry, I'm misspeaking here. The the, re the reason that works is because the denominator here is is what we're kind of looking at, which means I am taking um, I'm, I'm taking the square root of x to the first. That's kind of the way you look at this. X to the one, and then it's just two is the denominator. I'm taking the square root of it. Okay, so you, there's different ways of of of, of I don't know, memorizing that, but but if you, if you just remember one over one half is square root. What happens if I have one over three? What am I taking? What root? The cube root. The cube root, exactly. So, and what happens if I have like, uh, 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 just say two over three? That's a that's a good one. The square of the cube root. I'm um, taking this cube root of the square. Same thing. He's you're both right. Yeah, I guess so. I I, I you say it a little bit differently, but you take yeah, you're taking the cube root of the square, right? So. I don't know. Do you guys want to do? I don't want to do exponents. Uh, one of these. Days. I, I don't like. The, but maybe once somebody else will. But yeah, those are good rules to memorize. So, anyways, uh, in this particular function, um, you'll see that it's it's approaching something, right? It's it's approaching here. So, Steve, can I, if I may, this is a great example where we have a right hand limit, and we can still have continuity if the function is not defined past a certain point. So as long as the function is defined and the right-hand limit exists, then we say the function is continuous there. So here's a case where the right-hand limit is the limit. Uh, depending, oh, where did you stop the function? Yeah. So this is actually a weird one, guys, because the domain of the square root function is only all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, right. the entire graph is restricted to that. This is kind of a tricky example because of that. Yeah, I remember that. The, the, you know, the domain is what we're going to put in. The range is where we get out. So the domain here is, all, is literally what he, he just says. All, it's all positive numbers. It's all x is going to be to the right of zero, right? Okay, uh, Steve. I think I got. I think I got. I think I got the bonus one. If uh... type it in there, and then we'll 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 work it out. Okay. Okay. So the the way you want to simplify this, this is get this gets into another way to simplify. This is why I included this bonus one. Um, I actually found it somewhere else, and this I thought it was really good because this this is another way to to get to um, change a, a equation in order to actually be able to. To work with it. So the way we're going to do this one, we're going to do something called complex conjugate. What I call con oh, complex right, conjugate man. manipulation. Okay, I'm manipulation by conjugate complex conjugate. Um, there you go. That's that's what I got in the side chat. If you want a quick, I, mean, I probably wrote it wrong, but that's what yeah, I got. You, you look at it. Sorry, Steve. You mean radical conjugates? There's no complex numbers here, and it's radical complex. And, yeah, radical. And by the way, yeah. it's, not, it's just a difference in squares. Notice that again. Another difference in squares in the bottom. Yeah, you're right. It's a radical. Con it's a radical conjugate. It's not a complex conjugate, but well, actually, you know what? These are complex numbers. All real numbers are complex numbers. Yeah. Sure, if you want. Okay, to. I don't want to. Yeah, no. Okay, we're getting pedantic here. By the way, I just yeah, want. I just want to know. I, I just. I. I showed that to Midnight the other day. I asked him to go find out why all real numbers are complex numbers, and he did, and he did a brilliant job on it. So, yeah, he got yeah. it spot on correct. Yeah, I oh, could you mind? I I, I probably got it wrong because I rushed because I you know I'm trying to get the right answer, like but. At the side. All right. Well, let's check this out. So what I'm going to do is, I am basically going to times it by something, which is one, only rewritten in a different way. Two x, or it should be two plus square root of x over two plus the square root of x, is one. Right. I'm just timesing this by one is really what I'm doing, but by doing this, I can cancel out some things because if I, when you do a, a, a a product like this, I basically just times in the top by the by the top and the bottom by the bottom. So I end up with this. So basically, I say two times two is two squared. Then I go two 
plus two times uh, two radical X minus two uh, two radical X, which cancel out, and then I have X radical X radical X, which is radical X squared, right? Now remember this unitary operator here. Don't forget it, okay? Because this is two minus, right? Some pr something. So you can't you can't forget this little minus side. It'll kill you every time. So I'm basically I'm ending up with two squared minus radical X squared, and there's actually um, there's actually a, a, another way to memorize this. Basically, it's basically like I think it's uh, a minus b times uh, a plus b equals a squared minus b squared. Remember right, that's called the difference of squares. Yeah, the difference of squares. Okay, so I don't think I included in there, but I, I did want to point that out. These are little tricks you pick up after a while, right? So, anyways, I just I just the bottom I don't even have to do that with. I can just take the product of a four minus x times a product of two two plus the squared of x, right? So I'm ending up at the top, right? I'm going to simplify this, right? Which two squared is four. Okay. And what happens when I did was wrong, but same <laughs> idea. What happens when what happens when you square a square root? What happens? It it, it, they go away. It cancels each other out. So I'm just left with x. Now, if you notice, I could take four minus x and cancel it with four minus x at the bottom. Boom, gone. Yeah. Just, just, so, just ignore the answer in the side chat. I, I was okay, rushing so, a little bit, so I got it wrong. So what? What am I left with in the top? A one. one a yeah, one. one. Never forget that. Plus, what would have well, it's not zero, people. That's okay? true. A lot of people make that mistake. It is not zero. Just because I'm canceling this out here, right? This four minus x over four minus x is equal to one. That's why you can cancel this out. So, Steve, okay. I hate to be the Grinch that stole Christmas, but you did a lot of extra heavy lifting here. Scroll back up to the top. <laughs> oh, I know I did. I broke this. I, no, I, but I broke this. You, you did the equivalent of walking when you could have taken a cat. So just go back to the top. So, sorry, Steve. Yeah. See where you have two minus root x and then four minus x in the bottom? Where? At the very, the very beginning. Okay. You should have just yeah. written four minus x equals two plus root x, two minus root x, and canceled there, and you're done. One step. Well, no, I, I, know. I, 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 yeah, but I wanted to show exactly why this works. I broke it down each step by step. And by the way, this is actually from from another source, right? That's they, fine. It's this. extra work, and 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 again, it's not. It's I'm just telling you, it's you did a whole bunch of extra work for nothing. You should have just broken it down at the beginning. It's not. But I wanted. It's not. I wanted to show why it works. A lot of people coming in. This is this is this is how this is how this is how it was shown. In the example, That's fine. So, and I liked it that way because it actually shows each step. But you're right; there are simple. You eventually you'll be you'll find tricks and set shortcuts in order to do this stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, what you left with is one over this. Okay. So you can actually take the limit there, right? Because as x approaches four, right? You just put four in there. With square root of four is two, Plus right? Two. So I'm left with four. Right. So I'm left with as x approaches four, one plus two plus two. <laughs> Limit of a one fourth is equal to one fourth, so I can say that the limit of this equation is equal to one fourth. Right, and you it's know. important to remember that uh, yeah. pentagon square root gives two answers, but when we're considering this problem, we're only considering the principal square root. Correct, which is always positive. George is saying I can't cancel this those out. I don't, I don't know why he's saying that. You, you, I, 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 there's nothing I've done anything wrong. This is actually, like I said, verbatim from from online calc notes. Um, Right, but those are written by humans. Too. That's not. I mean, that's equivalent of saying because someone said it. I showed you a faster way. Just because someone else said it, I showed you a. Very what am I? What am I? What am I missing here? I'm, I'm, and what's you not a able to? You whole bunch of extra work. When, no, I understand the principle. It but is what, true that there are I, I get that. But where's yeah. the math wrong? I didn't say the math was wrong, but I just said. Yeah, but George's. He said you can't cancel those out. You, I want to. Uh, I want to actually point out there is a typo here. Where? Um, at the denominator, shouldn't it be two, minus root x rather than 4 minus x? 4 minus x, 4x. No? No. No, uh, but he's root. multiplying and dividing by the same quantity, but he's doing extra work. He should have just factored the new denominator in the first step. Right. Yeah, I thought he was doing a difference of squares at the bottom as well. No, he that's what he should have done, but he did a whole bunch of extra work. Yeah, I, right. I, okay. Right. Yeah, I, I, see what you, I see what you're saying. Um, you're right. There is a lot. There is extra work put in this, but it gets the right answer. Okay. The, the answer is correct. It is it is negative. But Steve, I love you, but that's the same as saying you needed you were in a hurry and you took a bike instead of a cab. It's it's no more elegant what you did. In fact, it's it's clumsy. I'm just saying I I got to say okay. For fair what's enough. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, do, do you do you want do you want to rewrite it? 
and I'll, and I'll put it in there so it's, you have a more elegant way of now, writing it. To be, fair, to be fair to Steve, everyone who's listening, I'm not trying to be hard on Steve, but this technique that Steve used is the technique used for a lot of limits involving radicals. And that's the same trick. You multiply this is the, the, this is the tech. This is the reason I did it the way. This is how I learned to do it. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, no, it's me not, too. It's not, like, but... it's not like it's like you know, like completely hosed. This is how I learned to do it. So I mean, there are, there are more elegant ways of doing it. But I think the way the, the reason this way I showed it and the way I learned how to do it is because it shows each step um, and why what we're doing to get to where we to get something we can actually get the limit of, right? All right, so let me extend all of that to Steve. It is a common technique in mathematics to multiply by one in any form you want. Right. And that's what then that's what he did there. Right. And, that's, and to add zero in any form you want. Not the most elegant way of doing it. I will grant that. Okay. Not the most elegant way. And so there are the but I said from the beginning there's multiple different ways of doing this. Okay. So can we move on to the next thing then? Yep. Because everybody's been asking for this. Okay, so this is where all life breaks down and uh, you know, we 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 basically lose our mind. Okay, uh, Steve. Some of us have already lost our minds, so I don't think that's possible. So, in this particular thing, let me move this over here. Oh, we do got some more people in here. So, this is what people have been asking for. This is the formal definition of the limit using the epsilon delta. Okay. Basically, the way this works is I'm gonna read this. It says, given for any epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero, so that the absolute value of the function minus the limit is less than epsilon when zero is less than the, the absolute value of the, of, the, of the parenthetical group x minus a is less than delta. Wow. Yeah, really convoluted. Uh, compl yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I help, Steve? So sure. What that means. By the, way, I, by the way, I added your inequalities here just because you, you sent these to me. So I added these in for. But, uh, it's fine. So basically okay. what it's saying, folks, is you can make the function arbitrarily close to the limit simply by making the value of x arbitrarily close to the value. So small changes in x mean small changes in y. Um, just a minor typo this here. You meant to say that a less than b implies a squared is less than b squared on that in those parentheses. A is right here? Yeah. Oh, I, well, you know what I said? It's not a typo. I just said it wrong. Okay. Um, this one, I, I I actually I didn't find I didn't find a, a, this out there. So I actually I actually try to do this one myself by proving very informally, very ineloquently. But I try to prove that this the one equation we have at the top is equal to nineteen. I actually add EO help between you know he sent me his proof and between his and mine I was able to to do it um, as well. I did it in a little different way than you EO. So you're not going to find this very elegant, but um, it is the way like math. It is the way like math is fun does it. I use the, their approach only with this particular problem. Okay. Yeah, I've used math is fun too. There, okay. it's so this is this this is see if it makes sense. Okay, you know. So what I'm saying is, as x approaches a, which we know is three, the limit is 19. Okay, right, right. So yes. this part of this advanced formal definition, right? This 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 absolute value here. We have to say is less than epsilon, right? We're, we're saying that this is less than epsilon. So if I put the function in for here, which is this, right? Minus the limit. I'm just substituting at this point. This is the function 2x squared plus 1 here, f of x, and minus the limit. I'm just, putting, I'm just substituting that in. It needs to be less than epsilon. What we're trying to do is basically find any value for epsilon that we can get where um, we can get the delta greater than 0, correct? That's true, and here so we're, we're, putting, we're putting in an we're trying to find an epsilon that exists, right? This basically, if we know we, we can get that value, we know that this is true. And you can use it by a bunch of inequalities. The way EO did it, he's a lot of inequalities, but it, it same principle. So I'm just I'm just trying to satisfy that formal definition. Okay, so I'm, I took the very so I'm taking this very first part, right? And I'm I want to find what epsilon is, okay? Because I don't know what epsilon is. Right, I just got to. I got to find an epsilon. I got to make sure it's greater than zero. Now, how do we do that? Well, again, I'm putting in the function. I'm minusing the limit. Next, less than zero or less than epsilon. Um, this, we just combine terms, right? And follow. Are you following along with me? Make sure this. Uh, I should keep quiet because you've kind of got things okay. bungled. You let epsilon be greater than zero, and you find delta. So epsilon is arbitrary, Steve. I think you mean to say you have to find. No, delta. no. It, I'm I'm actually finding an, an epsilon that would work. 
No, that's not I'm, how it works for every. You have to this is how math is fun does it, and I'm using their approach. They actually find a for, value. They, they they say try to find a value for e that you can work with, and then stick it in to see if it works. I am trying to find that value for e. But see, you, the whole point of limits is it has to work for every epsilon greater than delta, uh, epsilon greater than zero. Well, this like I said, this is their approach. Um, I'm just doing it that way. Let's let's just go through it and, and just see if it works out at first. Okay, so. Um, I, I, I'm combining terms. I bring out the two, right? I'm just factoring out the two, right? Uh, then I, um, I'm factoring out the exponent, okay? Right? Yep. So at this point, I'm just, I, 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 I want to get, I want to get the, this isolate. I want to get epsilon and a value I can get. So what I did, um, well, divide each side, right two and take and take the screw, basically the square root. So the square root will cancel out this this exponent. You left with the square root of epsilon over two. This is the same value you got, by the way, Eo, right? Right, but you're taking a whole bunch of liberties. It's not true that if a squared is less than b squared, that a is less than b. Take, for example, minus five is less than three, but five, minus five squared is greater than three squared. But go ahead. All right. Well, like I said, let's just try it this approach because this, this is the approach math is fun. And I haven't done epsilon delta in 25 years, so bear with me here. Um, but let's assume that, that delta is equal to the square root of epsilon of a two, which we found here, okay? If that's the case, I can go back and I want to find this part right here, right? X is less, or excuse me, zero is less than the quantity of X minus A is less than delta. I want this, this, this inequality, okay? So, I just, I just substitute square root of E over two as delta, right? And then I can take the square of both sides. It cancels out the square root. I can factor this down, right? I, I, just, I distribute the exponent. And by the way, just a distribution of an exponent over subtraction, I've just, it's just, you, you take two over x, uh, times x, or excuse me, two raised, to the, x raised to the second, three raised to the second, so I'm left with x squared minus nine, right? Then I take two on both sides and times it. This cancels out the two on the right-hand side. I'm left with two on the left-hand side. And I'm left with two. I, I distribute distribute it over. So two x squared minus eighteen. I'm left with two x squared minus one plus nineteen, which is another way of showing this. So I'm showing this right here, which is my original thing here, right? Two x squared plus one equals nineteen. I'm taking this part right here. This is what I'm getting when I take f of x minus l. Okay. Um, so and so, for, so what I'm showing for the inequalities. Is, I'm the only one. Yeah. Confused. I'm the only one. Confused as to how you factored x squared minus nine into x minus three quantity squared. Where? Go up a little more. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused by that too. Okay, where? Going up again. I tried. I again. This one I was trying working out with Eo because again, right this there. completely, Steve, Steve, completely Steve. From scratch. Steve, that square does not go into x squared minus 9. If it, there's middle terms in there. It's x squared minus, uh, what is that, 6x minus yeah, 9? Yeah, you're right. But, um, yeah, you have, to, you have to use inequalities to make this work. And by the way, Steve, just if you look forward, you were arguing vehemently, but you actually showed what I said. You chose delta. The whole way this works is you let epsilon be greater than 0, then you choose a delta, which is a function of epsilon, which is what your proof shows. Um, and again, epsilon can be arbitrary. The point is you have to choose a delta that works based on that epsilon, which lower on you did. You chose the same delta. I chose the same one, right, okay. Right, you kind of, there's a lot of, it's funny because you skipped a lot of steps that, anyway, I'll let it go. There's, there's a more elegant way to do it. If you, if you, I'll tell you what, um, let's go back to the, the definition. If you want to, uh, I, I have your proof, by the way. Do you, you want to show your proof? You could screenshot it and then all the steps are filled in there. I, they're not going to get it okay. anyway. Ovid might, but the rest won't. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, the the delta epsilon method sucks. I haven't done it in many many years. Don't take this is not my part of my presentation. I didn't even want to add this until actually people had, had said, D "Why don't you show the delta epsilon?" Because I suck at delta epsilon. I will always suck at delta epsilon. So can you just Steve, 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 Steve Dylan did that to torture you. <laughs> can you? Can you? Do you still you, have that? Do you have the screenshot I sent you? Of the <clears throat> yeah, I'm just trying to to get it. One sec. Now, again, what Steve's showing you is actually part of advanced calculus, the delta epsilon proof. They used to sh they used to make kids like do their best in calculus, but hardly anyone teaches that anymore. They just kind of say this is the foundation. And it's, yeah, you know, it's pretty rigorous. That's why I was surprised Steve was trying to it's 
it's yeah, it's very solid. rigorous. And again, I haven't I haven't touched this shit in ages. Um, so this is a very very rigorous way of doing it, which is out my area. So uh, this is what this. Is, I get. I'll take the A for effort. I I, think, I got the concepts. Trust me. It's just the the. The, it's very, very rigorous, and we have people in here that actually <coughs> teaches math. Abhi, can they, you check my proof? See if you follow it. And, and they're very, that? very rigorous people. So this is beyond the scope of an introduction. This is advanced, rigorous calculus stuff. So bear with us, guys. So okay, this is the prelim that you took for all of x is greater than or equal to x. Okay, right? So for every positive, and again, we're just dealing with neighborhoods here. Go ahead. Okay, so you're you're saying that the function minus the limit, you you and you put this in exactly that I did, right? You got you got two x squared minus eighteen. You factored out the two. And you're saying that's less than or equal to two two uh, quant two absolute value x minus three squared. Which is actually I think what I got, isn't it? Did I did I not get that? That extra part in the middle there. Um, it's yeah, right here. This is, wait, this is uh, this is this is he got the see he's using in the qualities right, but I got the same I, I got the, the same math so let's just find out where he went. So he's saying now that let's see for second line there, the that's the like, extra step that you're missing. Where? Yeah, it doesn't seem like line. it's being factored correctly. Yeah, no, it's that's not an that's an inequality, not an equality sign there. That's why, because right. he's he's taken out the two middle terms in the in there, and that's why you can actually write that inequality. You guys can you guys can see this this proof that Eo did, right? Is that what you're looking yeah. at? Okay, so you're saying on his proof he's missing something? No, no, you're missing that second oh, okay, step that he's written. That's fine. Okay, so his step. Okay, so he's got. It's the one that has a star on it. Yeah, the has, verify using inequalities. And that okay. is correct. But what he's written there is is correct. As long as long as if you go up the top, if you go up the top there, just scroll up his picture a little bit. You have that for all x is greater than zero. Right. Okay. You have to have that condition, or else that inequality will not hold true. Right. Right. Okay. I. I. I we're following. Okay. So once he gets once he's at that part, right, um, he's he's going to let epsilon equals be greater than zero, right? Because the definition for, for the Epsilon delta x epsilon has to be greater than zero, right? Now, wait, why, why, why did you? I got the same thing here, but why did you choose square root epsilon over two for delta? Because I work backwards. I started with the limit, work backwards. That's what we all do. But then we make it nice and elegant at the end. But that's why I included the prelims that kind of shows you what I'm doing up there. So you kind of you, 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 you just did it in your head, and then you yeah, you end up with delta. No, not in my head. I worked it out. There was there's a fair bit of work, and there's a lot of algebra that kind of some of the steps you skip. But so. Let epsilon be greater than zero. Choose delta equal to square root over two, epsilon okay. over two. Then if x minus three is less than delta, so look carefully. Abed, I'm curious if you can if you agree with my logic there. Sense, but it's not expanded out. That's why it might get confusing. Because you're missing your inside, you didn't show that the, um, that negative six x term and Oh factors. no, that's that's easy. Start off with the start off with biconditional inequality. Start off with the absolute value of x squared minus nine, which is the same as x minus x squared plus nine. Uh, is greater mm -hmm. than or equal to x squared minus 6 plus 9, if and only if 2x squared is greater than or equal to minus, uh, minus 6x plus, uh, the 9s cancel, if and only if 2x squared plus 6x is greater than or equal to 0, if and only if x squared plus 3x is greater than or equal to 0, if and only if x times x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, and that's clearly true for all real numbers. That's a lot of if and only ifs. But that's how you do it. Yeah, well, we, we, dude, we are going so far off the map of introduction to limits. This is like like major, major. Yeah, this is why right, so on, it how it many viewers have we lost? How many viewers have we lost? This is why, this is why I, I tell you what, this is why I hate, I hate the epsilon delta method. It is convoluted. It, it may, you know, what, you, you learn it and you, you, you get it, and then you really you never have to ever, 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 ever touch it. Because, See, can I point out in yeah. calc books, you can. They always use linear functions for these proofs because anything above cubic or more, there are always these ad hoc ugly proofs. I was lucky because it's a quadratic. I could use a difference of squares trick. But the point is, this is the whole point you made earlier. The reason we have all these rules that you spelled out for everybody is because we want to avoid this because the proofs get ugly quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm going to close this. If you, do you, do you, are you still looking at it? Do you need it for anything? Okay. So, uh, you know, so... 
the, the, let's forget about the, that proof part because, like I said, I, I probably did butcher it a little bit. And again, epsilon delta. Now you, but everybody in the live chat can see. Even people that teach us stuff, it's not easy. Okay, so all you need to know for the formal definition is for the, for the epsilon delta is this basically this. this is, uh, and why it works that way, we can get into more if, if he wants to have a hangout. But I, I don't. I want to kind of back away for that because uh, my presentation ended <coughs> with the bonus thing here. Okay, the other <laughs> part was just forget about it because I. I not going to do uh, epsilon delta. Um, so, anyways, though, um, you guys kind of get the basics of the of the, how the functions work and why what we're trying to do and how we're trying to yeah. actually show what happens as something approaches something, hey, right? Steve. Yes. Hey, George. Mm -hmm. Hi, buddy. Hi there. Uh, one of the uh, other truths is the triangle You're breaking up. I can't, we can't really. I'm You're breaking right. up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know why. Huh. Try again, okay. though. Try again. I say no. One, one of the other tricks, or one of the common tricks that you use in a lot of these proofs is the triangle inequality when doing these sorts of things. But, you know, right. with the epsilon delta proofs, basically all you're doing is you're just saying, all right, I want to get arbitrarily close to the limit point. So I pick an epsilon. Now can I find an interval on the domain, the delta, in which it will be finite? I, I have you know? I'll tell you, George, I have used the triangle inequality when it came to the Cauchy sequences. I will kill myself if I ever have to do it again. Yeah. Just after anyway, I Anyway, what, what I was trying to it, point out. Whoever embedded that shit needs to just die. Because yeah. it's, All it's I, barbarically what, torturous. What I was trying to point out to you on that last limit that you were doing where you canceled out the factors where yeah. X goes to 4, strictly speaking, that's an illegal operation because you can't cancel out factors where they uh, become zero. I mean, that, that cancellation well, you can't, you can't, if, X. You, you can't, you can't as long as you, you, you note on there where X doesn't equal, zero, uh, X doesn't equal whatever the value is. Right. Yeah. You know, well, you note on there, which which I think uh, didn't you know, you pointed out initially. Yes, right? but 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 that's your but that's, that's your limit point. Usually, the way you solve those types of things is using the Hopatel's rule, where you take yeah. the derivative of the denominator and the numerator, and then find the new limit. See if you can find the limit. Yeah. If it still becomes zero over zero or infinity over infinity, then you keep taking derivatives of the numerator and denominator separately until you get a limit. There you go. So I think we've confused everybody enough <laughs> with the whole, yeah. once, we, once we get into the delta epsilon stuff, it's it's not easy, guys. And these triangle inequalities and stuff, they're they're not easy. And Cauchy sequences, not easy. Um, the other one type of what's called didikine cuts, or didikine? Did, did didikine. Didikine. Yeah, right? Didikine. Yeah, however you pronounce his name. Yeah, they're not easy stuff. Um, I I am not a fan of that. I would never be able to to um, to do a presentation on that because it's beyond my level. That requires pretty heavy, pretty heavy understanding of this stuff. Um, but I, like I said, limits aren't that bad. Um, you know, once you get an understanding of limits, um, I, I wanted to do a basic presentation on it. I think that I've accomplished that. Um, the the end part just just don't worry about it. It got way out of control um, because that is a really really rigorous way of, of defining de uh, uh, li limits by formal definitions. But you guys got any question on the actual just basic <coughs> stuff? Mm. RSC227 says, you're as confusing as a G-Man sermon. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, that's yeah. A, yeah, we know what? Let's, let's have G-Man try to come in and explain some of this stuff. Oh no no no, no 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 hold on hold on hold on Steve 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 you know you know we we you know we need to we 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 need we we need to get <clears throat> excuse me you know we need to we need to get the guy yeah, the the guy who got a B plus in calculus to come in here and try and try to talk to us about it. Who is that, Ronnie? Well, no, I was I was thinking of wait, somebody else. Wait, Ronnie said he got uh, the Steve? B. Plus? I thought he said he got an A. I have, yeah, he got an A. That's right. Yeah, Ronnie. Well, Ronnie said he got an A, and he also said he, he dropped out of uh, of college first first couple days because it was too easy for bio. Well, I meant well, well, I meant begs the question. I meant Edgar. I meant Edgar, I meant Edgar but yeah, I'm, yeah uh, that's I exactly. Can't... I don't know. We haven't quite figured that out. That we've asked the same question. Uh, like, Steve, I mean, what, what, yeah, George. You know, if, if you really want to make this whole thing about limits productive, uh, the way I would recommend you approaching it is. When you're looking at limits, 
is you're implying that uh, like in, in, in the case of series that they converge and why not just deal with infinite series and look at various techniques for determining whether or not a series convergence like right we, we can have a test and roll test and all these different things we and that's have, a lot more interesting way of approaching things we could have a hangout on that um if, you, if that that requires a little bit in depth that i i could probably jump into but i wanted to get some basic stuff down first i mean if we wanted to, to go into how to do infinite sequences and limit of a sequence and how to do um you know if you want to go into uh Lo, Lo, Hopital, I, can't, I hate his name. Lopital. Lopital. Yeah. Lopital. Uh, his rules. I mean, remember that the squeeze theorem, right? Right. We want to get into the squeeze theorem. Anything like that, we could probably get into. But until I think we get some of the more basic stuff down, like I have with the order of operations, I had with the the, um, the well Taylor series isn't basic, but I want to do more of the basic presentations just so everybody kind of gets a. a, a up to speed a little bit before we start going to some of the more advanced stuff because that's why I didn't do the the matrix one yet because I was like why bother do matrix if we don't if you haven't got over linear equations yet right it makes no sense so yeah there's a lot of stuff we can get into that sure um, I actually happen to like sequences and, and summations and all that stuff I find them be quite interesting but they're not something that I think people can jump into pretty quickly do you George I think you go in a lot quicker to that than uh talking about limit points and Cauchy limits and Cauchy sequences and uh, delta epsilon proofs. Well, that's and, why I didn't want to go into delta epsilon. I, I was talked into it, okay? I did not want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Now you know why. Yeah, I mean, delta epsilon, I just leave that for a formal uh, cal course in calculus. I agree with you. See that, EO? See? I didn't, wait, yeah, right I didn't say it with you. Say I right. was against this too, Steve. I was wondering why you're doing it. I didn't encourage oh. you to do this. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Other people were asking about it before when I said I was going to do it. Anyways, so what what we what some of the other things you wanted the for, pe for other people to do as well? If you guys in the live chat, you know, people watching, um, what's some of the presentations on some ba some basic mass or some mass you want to learn about? We're not. I'm not doing Hamiltonian operators. No. I'm not doing multivariable, no. You want to do like you want to do like maybe first order linear equations? That, you that need, just, uh, you need to actually get an introductory course in calculus first of all. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. The more basic, as in, you really need to get first principles down pat. All right. Well, let's. I'll tell you what. The next one I'll do is I'll work on first principles and I'll also work on deriving the power rule because I think that 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 proof is actually a good way to to show. Um, how some of this stuff actually works. Would you agree? Do you know the proof for deriving the uh, the power rule? You don't have to memorize, but uh, you know. yeah, I do. You just okay. you just need to the answer. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. And I have I have the proof for it, and I can go over that. Didn't we? Did it? Didn't you kind of do that already? No, kind no. I, well, not you touched have, on it a bit. I, mean, I have you not to really that. touched on it at all. On the first one, I think it was, you had to use that kind of, um, what was it, uh, I call it comb combination um, notation, but like I think you guys called it choose notation. Yeah, and, and they're in the live chat. What kind of notation? Combination notation. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was when EO was showing a computation notation. Yeah, combinations, yeah. Yeah, 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 same thing. Yeah, um, and it, by the way, it's it's a Lorentz Barney. Uh, yeah, it's not Lawrence. It's Lorentz transformation. Um, I've I've done Lorentz transformations. Um, again, nothing I've done for too long for me to ever bother with. That's something I would actually recommend George. If George wants to explain um, Fourier transformations, Lorentz transformations, or anything like that, that's much more something that he or you would be capable of doing. Um, you don't want to learn Lorentz transformations from me. Trust me. Why would you want to go into transform theory if uh, I wouldn't trying to get uh, people? I mean, you really have to gone through um, a lot, many, uh, a whole year of calculus before you can really start. Right. Understanding well, I'm just saying that's what they're saying in the live chat, right? And I'm like, these that's that's way more advanced than we'll ever get into right now. Um, but I'm just saying I ask for basic stuff, and they're giving like Lorentz and Hamiltonians and Dell and and Nambla and whatever the hell is like no 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 well, Hamiltonians aren't aren't basic stuff I mean you're getting into some pretty advanced concepts when you start talking about Hamiltonians and Green's functions and all this I, other. I thought we could do basic basic matrix right that would be not that difficult 
especially like Kramer's rule, how to determine it, you make it get a determinant, how to do an inverse matrix. Yeah. Uh, well, it's better if you're going to do if you're going to try to invert matrices. Um, Kramer's rule, remember, only holds for a three by three or a two by two. Anything greater than that, you have to use cofactors. Sure, but it's but for figuring out a two by two using Kramer's rule is pretty simple to use. That's right. Yeah. Sure. I do remember that. So, I mean, that's something I could do a presentation on. Um, but I'm just asking the other people, maybe, what, like I said, what do they want? I know uh, Midnight wanted something to do something on explaining a little bit about sets, uh, ira irrational numbers, rational numbers, uh, integers, whole numbers, real numbers, complex numbers. I thought that'd be cool. Um, yeah, I, I sent you the presentation in DMs. I don't know if you looked at it. You know, I have uh, if, if you really want to do something interesting, I'd highly recommend if uh, you're comfortable with uh, complex numbers, uh, just showing that you can integrate just about any elementary function by expressing them in terms of complex exponentials. Everything's an exponential. Functions, hyperbolics, uh, they can all be written as exponentials, and exponentials are very easy to integrate and differentiate. So when you start getting calm, uh, pretty complicated integrands, like trying to integrate, say, e to the x times sine uh, x, um, in the standard ways that undergraduates learn that uh, by doing various substitutions, uh, it gets fairly involved and complicated, but it's yeah. We haven't, we haven't even all done it though. We haven't even gone to integrals, integrands yet. We we barely yeah. started. We were just talking about differentials, or even uh, to differentiate. Bit, but, yeah, you know, like you express um, signs, trig functions in terms of uh, complex exponentials. Uh, finding derivatives of them is uh, quite trivial. And people are asking. They they say, how about some algebra stuff? How to do algebra? Okay. Um, Again, we kind we kind of like skipped a lot of things because a lot of people were like, "Yeah, we don't want algebra stuff. We want to learn a little bit about calc," and that's why we were like doing these kinds of presentations. Um, if you want to backtrack a little bit and start a little bit more from algebra or basic number theory, that's that's fine with me. I mean, you guys could do any presentation you want, right? I'm I'm only trying to do presentations of stuff that I'm at least familiar enough with to be able to explain. Limits are not that hard. Um, but when you start getting into like the advanced stuff, like the the you know, the delta epsilon delta, forget it. I'm like, there's no freaking way. I, I barely remember it myself, right? He was great yeah. up to then, Steve. You should truncate it right at the end of that last example. It was great. No, no, I'm gonna include it all. My full pause or everybody's fun, you know. So it's okay. I tried though. I, I at least gave it a shot, right? He was a valiant. I, you were close. I mean, you just you missed a few of the steps, but it's fine. But dude, for I tell you, for not doing a a epsilon delta literally in 30 years or some shit like that, I. I think I did okay. You, you know. Fair enough, yeah. For, I'll tell you what. If G-Man wants to come and explain to us uh, Epsilon Delta, I'd be happy to listen. He's a little busy him. at the moment, I think, right? Yeah, since he's became a Jehovah Witness, he's been really busy with them. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? <laughs> Got to get a plug-in for my video. Got to get a plug-in for my video. Uh, that, was, that was fantastic. You know, If he's going to build you a straw <laughs> man, then you need to build him one. Did you like that, Dave? I did, I did. Do you think he's going to understand the point behind that? No. No, but he's I'm, just going to accuse you of lying, even though he doesn't understand the relevance. Pretty rave reviews on that video so far. So, and uh, I, I thought it was funny. So I like it. Did you guys? Did anybody else not watch it? Anybody watch? It? Did you? Not yeah, yet. I, know, I know you watched it. Oh. So, anyways, is this? Is this? Is do you have? If people don't know what we're talking about, go to my actual main channel, Steve McRae. Um, and I have a video out that basically I straw man the hell out of G man because that's what it's been doing to me and uh, No citation needed or no citation required. That's that's the new meme But anyways guys, I'm gonna end this because we got other stuff to do tonight Just let you know we have guess who coming in tonight on this channel. You want to take a guess? I'll take, give you a hand his first name starts with RN and his second name ends in raw Really? I, 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 I... <laughs> I can't pronounce his name, sorry, but I know who you're talking about. Aaron Ra, yeah. He'll be here tonight, um, I think at 6 o'clock, and he'll be having a discussion with General Han Solo with Richard moderating. That's going to be awesome. And then tomorrow, he's actually going to be on my main channel, um, Steve McRae, and he's going to be... Wait, do you mean 6 o'clock your time? Pacific time. 9 o'clock, yeah, 9 o'clock, because it's, it's already 6.20, 6 o'clock here, so yeah. 
nine o'clock Eastern, and Steve. he's he's wait, one sec. He's going to be with the Atheist Edge. You know him, really nice guy that has dropped in. So it's going to be on Raw and Atheist Edge taking on any kind of a theist that wants to come in and give him a challenge. So, anyways, go ahead. I was just going to say, could you please congratulate him on the success of his? Well, I wanted to ask. I'm assuming his audiobook is doing well, and could you tell him that? Um, we hope that he publishes more books. He's a great writer. He's a great speaker. We've all told him that. Yep. Yeah. And you're, like I said, we're, we're, I'll eventually open it up a little bit more. So maybe, you know, people can come in and, and have a conversation with him. They're really looking for theists that wants to engage. I've been, I've been actively trying to find some, but it's been a little bit difficult. But anyways, it's uh, time to end this, guys. So I want to thank you all for watching this. Again, don't don't worry about the end so much. Um, I, don't get bogged down on that because that, that Epsilon Delta stuff, you're never going to really – have to know too much about it unless you get into some really kind of rigorous formal mass excuse me it's good to know because it is the formal definition but the concepts i want people to learn was just basically what's a limit um how to approach a limit due to determine whether we can find the limit from the right hand side the left hand side if they're equal and the limit exists today that's it so we got the basics if anybody got questions on it they can, they can message me and if we want to do more about that and also yeah we do need somebody to do trig uh thank you um and the live feed there Somebody's printing some trig stuff. I I understand trig, obviously, but it sucks. So if somebody wants to do a presentation on trig, take it away, guys. Trust me. We would love to have something, not just on cosine, sine, tangent stuff, but I mean on the inverse, the arc tangent, the hyperbolic functions. I think that's something that I, I, would, lo I would love to participate and hang out in that particular one if somebody does a presentation on that. I could do that for you sometime if you want. I would love that. I would love that. Yeah, I've seen your – if you guys don't know, don't know George, George, throw out your channel – because you have some amazing videos where you go on a blackboard and you're doing the whole MIT type thing um, in detail to solving these things and showing, you know, why the earth isn't flat. So want to throw your channel out there real quick? Um, I <laughs> Don't put them on the spot, Steve. No? You don't advertise your channel? Not really. Okay, no problem. No, I just, okay, that's fair enough. Here's a link to one of the videos. But oh. George knows what he's talking about when it comes to math and, and engineering. So let's just put it that way. And he does a very so elegant wait, job. He went to MIT? No, MIT like. Oh. It's basically no, it Michigan Technological University in Colorado State. Have you ever seen a professor when they have like multiple blackboards or whiteboards and they're just writing on it and basically it just that's that's his style, right? And um, I've, I've, I've had to actually do stuff like that on a blackboard more than one occasion in training and in instructing when I was in nuke school and in, and actually in the fleet. Um, it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of, there's a lot of preparation that goes into that stuff. Um, yeah. So. But anyway, guys, let's, let's end it. Uh, sorry, pseudo, you popped in at the, the, just at the end. Um, did you watch? <laughs> nope, guess not. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you later.